everyone, and welcome to STEM Chat. This episode, we're talking about staying cozy and connected with STEM. You may be staying home more because of the pandemic, and it's been harder to see family members at this time of year. But chances are, if you're watching our episodes, you probably like STEM a lot. And we're going to talk about how you can use science, technology, engineering, and math to stay connected with family and friends and stay cozy at home. That's right. And the weather is changing, too. So what a great time to get cozy. Yep, so uh, one of the things we always did in cold weather was we had a balloon room. And it's kind of fun because kids can do sort of like large um, motor skill physics experiments while they're jumping in the big pile of balloons and pushing the balloons around. But one of my things that I use to blow up all the balloons is this electronic balloon pump. I had no idea about that, but I think a lot of places um have shut down. So it's kind of a fun little like yeah. gym that you can have in your living room or playroom and just let them kind of get their energy out. But then they're also learning physics, I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so and we definitely miss all the indoor playrooms around here. Um, so let me just show this balloon pump. We just put the balloon on. And then it's electronic and inflates it very quickly. And you can That's tie so it. <laughs> Perfect for birthday parties too. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, when we can have them. Um, I guess you can have that's your true. own like <laughs> Zoom Zoom party. So what else are you doing to to prep your house to get cozy this holiday season? Um uh, let's see. So I guess after we made our last episode, we're very excited about origami. And every year at the Natural History Museum has an origami Christmas tree that's decorated by Origami USA. And you can actually mail in your own origami decorations to be a part of the Christmas tree. Um, we didn't make it in time to do it this year, but maybe next year. So we decided to do an origami Christmas tree at home. And we also wanted to decorate it with some paper flowers. So oh, that's beautiful. Um, yeah, so we've been, this is my daughter's little notebook and we were looking at real flowers and then figuring out how to make um, designs to make kind of like accordion folded paper flowers. Um, this is a carnation that we made over here. Now, did you the use accordion. tissue paper? Yeah, so this is tissue paper, but then there wasn't enough variety with the tissue paper of what you can do. So I wound up going into crepe paper. Here's some of the flowers that we made. Oh, they're beautiful. And we wound up getting this book that had a lot of helpful tips for the crepe paper flowers. And I really like this page because it talks about the anatomy of a flower. Oh, that's so neat. I love seeing that. That actually reminds me of um, like an origami store in Paris that actually sells these paper kits that I bought some. And they actually have crepe paper. Everything's in a mm -hmm. kit. But they actually show you how um, the flowers are, are made and the, the anatomy as well. So that's great. Oh, that's really link neat. it below. But that's yeah. really fun to see. So that crepe paper, can you hold up that flower you had again? Oh, sure. Was that um, crepe paper, um, did you color it to have like the, the oh. pink and the white? No, it's um, it comes colored like that. They actually have all different, you can get all different color combinations. I just picked this one. Oh, where did you get it? Right. Um, I got it from uh, Cardafini. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but you can order it online. We can link to that also below. Great. That sounds cool because I, I like to order some. You know how I love paper. <laughs> yeah, oh, you'll like this. It's really fun to play with. That's cool. And it's supposed to be um, like color fast and archival too. So if you spend a lot of time making something, you should be able to keep it for a while. Another thing we do at home to stay busy is that I like to make tinker kits for my kids. And I have one to show here. Um, Natalie? <laughs> So I basically collect a bunch of materials and organize them in a box. Um, some of them are scrap materials, like old paper towel rings, and this is like little bits of cut up ribbon. Um, and the kids just have a lot of fun with it and they invent and make things. Um, so so it's, just, it's nice, I just like give it to them and then they start playing with it. You're, you're very organized, because it reminds me when I was um, younger, I was trying to find a photo of this, but I couldn't find any, but my daughter had a bits and bobs box, and it was basically, it was a shoe box, and she would put it in her little like junk drawer. Um, yeah. But she had like, anytime she found something like wrappers of something, or like, um, you know, wire, or I don't know, any little thing she would put in there, and it would be like something that she could tinker with. 
Um, and then she also had like her craft supplies were organized in like little Michael's like rainbow little case. So she had everything oh, yeah. in, like there that she could tinker around with. And I find it's great because you, they, your kids must love this, right? Yeah, it's. I think it helps when it's organized. Like the fact that it's organized makes it easier for them to work with. Yeah, I agree because hers was a mess. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. you just said you had the rainbow thing for it. I know the, the, for the cross supply part, but the bits and bob part where she threw in the pieces, it was very messy. We oh. just, yeah. So this makes sense to have all little compartments for all little things. Like she would put little pieces of felt or little things, and it would just be in that box. But the other craft supplies would be organized. Um, better below so all of our other stuff but yeah I like this a lot this is great oh and it's like you could do it as kind of like a gift for the kids too because it's like a cheap easy thing oh, yeah, to do yeah yeah well I also think since kids will be off uh off of school for um for during winter break it's a great way for them to just sort of like take the time to like you know experiment and just tinker mm -hmm. around and play with you know yeah supplies and stuff uh, one of the other things I did also, I think my daughter was around eight or nine back then. She loved taking things apart. Um, oh, wow. She's much, was much older than your girls, but, uh, she, so I got her for Christmas, um, a mini toolkit and a real mm -hmm. one, not like, um, not like, and ones that didn't have dangerous things. I think she was nine already. So she, like, she wanted mini screwdrivers because my dad had all these old watches mm -hmm. uh, that he gave her. So she liked taking them apart and seeing what the pieces were inside. And she was old enough to be able to use these tools, but I wanted her to have a set that wasn't like, you know, the toy sets for, for kids. And you can find them on Amazon. So just, you know, I think you can look at your child and see what they're into and kind of figure things out what they want to do. But I thought it was great that she could just, I'm like, you know what, just go crazy, take it apart and see how things are built. You know, how is a watch made? And she liked doing that. So reverse engineering. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. It's great hands-on activity. So what are, what are your kids tinkering when they, when they take the box out? What are they making? Uh, let's see. Well, so I actually have another if we can go back to the regular screen, I can show you our other box of stuff because they usually use this. Um, we keep all of our, I guess it's like it would normally be recycling things in this bigger box. And then oh, they um, use the little bits with the bigger bits. Uh, and they've made, I guess, so at my daughter's school, they were encouraging them to make marble runs out of the recycled things in the tube. So they were doing that, but then they just make any, like the cereal box gets made into anything like a little backpack or little house for um, creatures. That's fun. That's great. I picked up a zine for my kids um, from an artist named Phyllis Ma. And this is called Mushroom and Friends 2. There was also a Mushroom and Friends 1. And it has these really fantastical images of mushrooms that she finds. But she also she creates these kind of like worlds and scenes with the mushrooms. and. Um, they're so beautiful. They have such vibrant colors and they're just uh, very imaginary. And it's kind of like, um, I don't know, you're in some sort of fantasy image, but it's with real life things that you can actually find in real life. It inspired my kids to go and look for mushrooms in the backyard. And um, we're not really mushroom experts, so we weren't really sure what types of mushrooms there were. That's why they're wearing gloves. And then we looked at the mushrooms under pocket microscopes. And it was really neat because there were a whole bunch of different textures we weren't imagining um, and didn't think would be there. Uh, so this is the 20 to 60 time magnification, and this is the 100 to 200 times magnification. But it, the kids felt like they were in their own little like microscope worlds looking at these. It's amazing to see. Um, and thank you. You sent a postcard of one of Phyllis's mushroom art to my daughter, and she still has it on her bulletin board. So, you know, even if you can't forage for mushrooms around in your, your area or while hiking, you can just, you know, get some from the grocery store and uh, or look in your fridge, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. That's a great idea. We've been trying different mushrooms at home every week, too, because my kids are pretty excited about mushrooms. We did king trumpet mushrooms a couple weeks ago, and this week we're trying shiitake mushrooms. That's great. And you're getting them to try um, some more different foods then. Too. Yes, yes. <laughs> Phyllis has a new book that just came out called Special Nothing. 
And it's really neat. She has, um, she went to kind of like grocery stores and markets around the world. And she composed these beautiful still lifes out of sort of everyday things that you find. So it's kind of a nice message now to find the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Oh, that's great. We've been sending a lot of friends letters in the mail. And so we decided to send a giant dinosaur letter um, to one of my daughter's friends. So here we are cutting it out and they're decorating it over here. And I think my daughter was drawing like a real life size um, Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth on it. But it was really fun because um, we put dinosaur facts on it. And I think that right now sending things in the mail is a really great way to share your interests with other people. And it's very fun to receive things in the mail too. Um, you know, you can basically put mail anything with a first class stamp on it. And the first class stamp is like 55 cents. Um, I think the maximum dimensions you can send are um, six and an eighth inch by 11 and a half inch by a quarter inch thick. So um, I don't know, you can figure out something fun to put in there. And um, we also have sent a piece of mica that we found because mica is actually very thin and flexible if you like peel off a little flake. Um, and we sent a little um, envelope of balloons to one of the friends so they can have a balloon party. It's just a kind of a fun way to spread, sh spread some joy. Uh, oh, and there's for sure. So this is really ingenious because you've actually also, you create a fun activity for your kids to do that this probably took them a few hours, right? Oh yeah, they were working on this for a little while. Oh, and we okay. were looking at the dinosaur facts too. Oh, that's so that great. was fun. I think, I think that's a fun thing. So it gives them time to be busy and then um, you're able to also make a friend happy and get something in the mail. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's some neat stamps available now too. Um, there's Sally Ride and these first moon landing stamps actually have foil on them. So they're, you can see they're kind of reflective. Uh, there's some Tyrannosaurus Rex stamps that are lenticular. So I don't, can you see the picture changing? I don't know if it's working that well on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also some stem stamps that are foil as well. It's beautiful. You know, I love getting mail from you because um, my daughter takes all the stamps off the envelopes because they all have some sort of meaning or they're vintage stamps. And it's really like a, it's like an extra fun treasure. So oh, thanks a lot. We, stamps you put on the letter too. We like receiving mail from uh, your daughter also. She always puts such neat things in the letters. I, yeah, feel, I, I feel like our daughters are kind of like pen pals now. They are pen pals. She's like the older sister. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, okay. Can we talk about the mica? My, brother, my daughter just brought this over. Um, one of the things we've also been putting in the mill, we found some mica while we were hiking. So we've been peeling off one of the big flakes and putting in the mill because you can put something flexible in the mail. That and is it's kind of neat that you have like a rock crystal that you're mailing. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for favorite things. Since it's winter coming up, we thought of some cozy things you can do at home from Zoom build-alongs to um, quiet at-home projects for kids during break. Uh, Diana, do you wanna share some? My brother and his wife live on the West Coast and we've been unable to see them because we're not traveling right now. So recently my daughter did a make-along with them over FaceTime. And we got this Gundam robot kit and the whole thing is snapped together. So it's pretty easy to make um, for a first grader. And they built it together and kind of did step-by-step. Step. He would show her each step and show her which piece to clip out. Um, here's a look. And so he would like hold the piece up to the screen and then she would see it and find the piece too. And it was a lot of fun. It took a couple of hours to do, but it was nice they got to make something together and um, kind of hang out. I think it's kind of difficult too when you're in first grade to know what to chat about on FaceTime. So this was really nice. And she wound up making this little Hello Kitty Gundam robot. Oh, that's really cute. That's um, that's a great idea. Um, I think that's great for kids to just bond with their family members. Um, and instead of just talking about what's going on, um, they're able to make something and they, they feel a bond that they've made it together. Mm -hmm. and. You know, it could do it over Zoom, over FaceTime, anything. Yeah, yeah. 
I really love this um, Chibi uh, Tronics uh, kit. And uh, Diana, you actually know the founder. Yeah, um, it was created by G Chi. Um, she likes to make a lot of really neat um, kind of like sticker and muscle wire creations that are very whimsical. So it's nice that she has this kit because you can make them now too. Well, what I love about this is um, this is my daughter's been using this already. So it comes with everything. It comes with um, copper tape, uh, batteries, like everything you need to, to get it done. And so let me show you um, really quick. This is like the battery needs to go here and it'll light up because of the way you place the circuit. So it's all with stickers. Uh, you don't have to worry about them, you know, using wire and whatnot. And um, I think this is like, I got this actually um, for my daughter's 10th birthday party uh, a few years ago. So they, her and a few other girls could do this together. Um, younger kids, older kids, it's a great activity. You can just kind of like, hey, have some time away from a screen because you're actually doing all the stuff on paper um to take some time away and to just uh you know do this project this kit is actually sold on adafruit and so uh you can buy one for your family member and one for your child and they can do this together and kind of work on all the pieces together but it's such a fun thing i've actually bought some for friends for um as holiday gifts another kit you can get on adafruit that would be fun for a make along or build along um, is the Dradio kit by jay silver and it's nice because you can create your own musical synthesizer using the graphite from a pencil or even your body. Um, so there's two different versions of the kit. Um, there's one that's kind of like a no solder version and it comes with all of the pieces you need um, to put the little synthesizer together. Um, and then this is the board over here. And um, it's neat, so you can do it with your body. Um, but there's also a version that you can solder together too, I guess for older kid make along. That's great. Um, my next thing is something for, I think kids of any age, I got this Wi-Fi digital microscope and it can magnify up to a thousand times. Um, it connects to, um, an iPhone, Android phone, and also to a computer. It's easier to connect to a computer. Um, to do an, via iPhone, I would recommend checking on the app store. Someone actually comments that you need to like go into your Wi-Fi settings and choose the Wi-Fi for this device. But we looked at um, my daughter's sweaters. You can see the fibers. We looked at the Christmas tree pine needles. So you can take this outside or just keep it indoors and just look at, you know, do cross sections of produce and, and uh, look at all this, you know, onion skins and stuff, uh, things right in your fridge. But uh, this is so cool. I, I love that it's so portable and um, they're able to kind of discover science in their home. We also got a microscope and camera for um, my mother-in-law for the holidays um, so that she used to be a doctor. She's like a retired doctor. And so she and my daughter are going to look at slides together on FaceTime. Oh, that's great. That's fun. And she gets to actually describe all the scientific things behind yeah. it. Yeah, I think my daughter is an aspiring doctor, so she's oh, pretty excited. Okay. Another neat kit that I found is this um, Zivco crawling robot. And it's also snapped together. Uh, I actually got it for my daughter and her uncle for Christmas. And um, it's neat because it can follow you and then it can follow other robots. And it has a sensor and a proximity sensor, so it can also walk on its own and kind of avoid walking into objects. Oh, wow. So your brother is going to build it with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is their next build along. Oh, that's great. And then, you know, I think what another great idea is that you actually get a little break from it too. So your brother's mm -hmm. basically ba babysitting your child. <laughs> yes, she, he is kind of babysitting my child. <laughs> and you can take a breather. That's good. Yep. That's a great idea, right? Thank you for joining us on this episode of STEM Chat. Please give us a follow on our new Instagram account at STEM Chat, where we'll also get updates on Diana's rock tumbler, as well as lots of other things. Thanks for joining us. And we hope you guys have a warm and safe holiday season and happy new year. Happy new year too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.